Hello again, and uh, welcome to another Key Machine Chronicles with me, Rubber Band. And um, I've got a little piece of locksmithing history for you today. This is a Foley Bell Saw uh, Model 200, which um, is the de facto key machine that was issued if you elected to take locksmithing courses from Foley Bell Saw Institute which I think roughly around 1956, uh, there was a correspondence course that was offered by Foley Bell Saw. And uh, one of the things that when you saved up and you bought into this, you would have this machine mailed to you so you could cut a duplicate, send it back to their graders, and then you could be issued your actual score on the correspondence course. And if you ended up passing, you would have some sort of accredited background to towards becoming in a locksmith apprentice. So this is all apprentice level work. None of this gets you fully ready for journey level stuff. You know, you don't do any high level stuff with a correspondence course of this nature, but you did have your own key machine, which was a good start. And a lot of the best ways to get started on this kind of stuff is just raw experience. And this really gave you the chance to do that without a shop having to make a full investment on a, a rather unknown employee. So what I'm gonna be doing today is I'm gonna be cutting a key and I'm gonna go over some of the features of the machine. So you'll notice this tracer has a bit on here. It's the same shape as this, and that's important for making uh, the flats and the angles of these all uniform. It also has this micrometer adjuster so if you have a worn key over here you can dial it up a couple thousandths to make a more accurate duplicate so it's not as worn so say the depths are a little too far down from being used over time you could just dial it up and you'd be able to do a really quick adjustment with this manual duplicator to make the key work more smoothly and if this is your only machine and you couldn't afford an originator, that was a really good thing to be able to do. So this right here is exchangeable. So there is this one. This is the code cutter originator, but you can duplicate with this. There is a single sided sort of cutter and tracer that is meant for more proper duplication. This has multiple functionality, so I tend to leave it this configuration. You can get a digital readout spacing uh, micrometer for over here, and it will actually allow you to use this as a full originator using depth and space data tables. So this has a huge amount of versatility and it's really easily calibrated. So this machine is really, really good, especially considering the price point you can tend to get these at. I see these go for right around $200. You spend another 100, you have a code cutter and a duplicator. This is a really nice little machine. Um, it's not the most accurate all the time, and the jaws really could use some help. These are miserable. They are really, really hard to clamp certain keys in. I can't first say duplicate my linear key, my two, 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 three, four, three key. And, but this spacing bar is really good and it holds the spacing between here very well, considering how rigid it is. It's easily adjusted. Almost everything on here can be adjusted really well and really finely with just a small amount of hand tools, nothing specific. This is a sewing machine motor, I believe the belt um i've had to use like shipping rubber bands to replace this belt when i had to uh use some of these in the field um i uh, i just uh, i have a very large place in my heart for historical pieces and this is really up there and this one's in great condition so now i'm going to be doing a three-part series. Uh, part of it is I'm going to be doing this machine cutting flat steel keys because it has that cutter and this tracer will be flat steel. I'll show the duplicator version. So I'm gonna do all three cutters, all three tracers, and I'm gonna show you how they cut and the differences between those two. Also, the duplicator 
specific tracer allows you to do straight plunge depths like with KW11 and six cut GM where you just plunge a straight down. So this will have a hard time duplicating those. So if you can help it, um, you, 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 don't, you can change these out. It's not um, a really difficult thing to do. So you can uh, swap back and forth if you have to duplicate a, a large amount of KW11 or the six cut GM. So uh, without further ado, um, I'm going to use this old piece to make a key to my old standard Schlage construction core. It's genuine Schlage, so it tends to be accurate. And it's uh, the measure by which I gauge all of my machines. So without further ado, uh, here we go. Loud little bugger, ain't it? But it rips through keys, so. sewing machine motor kind of bogged down with the really strong depths. And then we'll just go back. A nice nylon brush to finish it off. Oops. And we all make mistakes. Ain't no thing. All right, here's my cylinder. And we have a nice working key. So, um, a very nice little piece of history. You can see cast aluminum. It's uh, not nearly as robust as some of my other key machines, but it does have a very special place in both locksmithing history and my, uh, my heart as well. So, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Key Machine Chronicles. Um, I'm going to be doing two more parts with this machine as mentioned earlier but i uh, wanted to at least get this one out there for people to be able to watch and as always uh i've been rubber band and thanks for watching